name, right? Right. Is he the feds? Ayatollah? You ain't telling on, bro. Who was the Ayatollah? Ayatollah. You ain't telling on, bro. Who was the Ayatollah? I don't don't know where he got Wait, wait, wait. Like me and Mar, we know the same people, and we ain't even from Compton. Like me and Mar, we know the same people, and we ain't even from Compton. So give us a little background on... Well, as as Melvin go, we go prior to 71. And prior to 71, it was uh, the criminal justice system in dealing with youth was on rehabilitation. So, you know, like he talked about getting uh, arrested 40 times. I was born on Elm Street. I'm from Nightmare on Elm Street, Compton, California. That's right. Shout out to Elm Street. Elm Street. Well, I mean, and at that time, our sets was... Uh, we were all treetops because all our streets are named after trees. Damu Kiway, Professor Melly Melly Hood, of course, man, you know that vibe. My beloved brother, my elder brother, I gotta correct you on some of your information. I don't know how you come to that conclusion, brother, but I got to help you out. This professor talks to you. I'm coming from a, a sincere, dear place. I'm coming to you with love. I am not trying to admonish you, but I am here to correct you. First and foremost, my dear beloved brother, Ayatollah Mar. We never met, but I did get a chance to see your video on Cam Capone TV, okay? First and foremost, you made the statement that you were born in 1950. Most of the guys... If you go back and take a look, Raymond Washington was born in 1953. He started the Crips. That made you three years older than Raymond. So, therefore, the Pyrus came in around about 71. So, most of those guys, they were relatively around 17, 18, and 71, right? Maybe, maybe it might have been too late, but however it goes, brother. Your timeline don't fit. That means that cats that were younger than you, you happen to be following. Secondly, I grew up in Fruit Town. I know, I know a, guy, a bunch of people from over there. I know a few people from over there who we know as the trees. That came later, brother. There was West Side Pyro. There was Fruit Town Pyro, okay? There was West Side Pyro, there was Fruit Town Pyro, okay? Before there were Fruit Town Pyro, there was the Orange Street Boys. Now, you had people like Zachary McGee, Ron Mosey, Tim Mosey, Jeffrey Everett, Frank and Tom, uh, that lived over what we would know referred to as the trees. If none of them brothers claimed the trees at that time, they would either either claim a brute town or either looters. There was no trees, brother. It just was, it just was no trees. Now, I don't know how you could figure and how you're doing your math, but if you're doing your math correctly, that makes you older than everybody. That makes you older than Raymond Washington. If you were born in 1950, that makes you older than anybody that, you the oldest gang baker. But yet, you made the mistake, you are the gang. Brother, I don't know at what point and what time you decide to enter this thing we call the gang bang. Because I know quite a few people. I ain't saying that you're not from where you're from. What I am saying is that your timeline doesn't meet. Secondly, let me get to my other point. You made the statement that Boot Hill, that Nutty Block used to be Boot Hill. Those are two separate entities. Boot Hill resided between Center and the Canal. There was some apartments across the street from Park Village. That was Boot Hill. There was a guy over there. His name was Boot Hill Reggie. He sacrificed a chicken. And he used to come out every morning hollering, this is Boot Hill, effing whatever, okay? Secondly, thirdly, 165 block was 165 block. They were next to the graveyard, true enough. Then they became NBC, which 
which was neighborhood block crip. Then they became Nucky Block. They would never boot hill. The swamps. The swamps were exactly where the swamps because they were the swamp because it was literally swamps over there. They were tadpoles, crawdads, and fish. That's why they call it the swamps. My grandmother and aunties used to go over there fishing when I was a little kid, and also there was rabbits. And then you made the statement of saying Spooktown. Spooktown came out somewhere 72, 73. After the Grandies, after Park Village, after the deal. Then it came Spooktown. So, brother, I'm just helping you correct some of your information. And your timeline doesn't fit. Because that makes you older than the Crips, that make you older than the Pyrus, and obviously that make you a late bloomer. Because if you was really about that life, you would have been the one that established it, to open up to to initiate the Pyru. But we all know that's not true, because it was put in Bob Louis, there was yellow eyes, there was bitch, there was blue neck. There were all those people over there, okay? Sugar Man. You mentioned Mickey Blue. You mentioned Victor Murphy. I know them as well. Mickey Blue, Judd Williams, uh, uh, Eddie Polk, all those guys over there. Uh, Yaya, uh, uh, Bob Murphy, all those guys. They were never into the Pyro gang. Pyru was a streak. We're putting in all those other guys, the Baba Louie, the Clark, uh, 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 Sockeye, and, and, and his other brothers, and Vince, and Nate, Yellow Ice, and all those cats. They formulated that, right? But what made it bigger was the East Side Pyru, because the East Side Pyru wasn't confined to a streak. It was a mass area that went from Rosecrans, starting from Long Beach Boulevard, and some parts in the K Street and Pearl Street near Santana, all that, all the way back up to Lang, all the way back across Long Beach Boulevard, all the way back across Compton Boulevard, and all the way into Linwood. That made the East Side Pyrus the biggest. Dang. Okay? Because at, at that time, the West Side was confined to a street, although the other streets picked up and became part of that. But what I'm telling you, if you look at the, the topography and the geographic location of the East Side Pool, they were never confined to a street. They accepted the car route based on that street name, but they was much larger than that. And I don't think you understand that. Now, I've heard of Herman Jr., I heard of Savage, I heard of Volcano, I heard of Ray Johnson, Russell Johnson, uh, I heard of uh, China Dog, of course, I heard of Bojangles, I heard of Vince, uh, uh, which was uh, uh, part time, Stephen Wolf, uh, Cash, Jimmy Butler. There was countless of dudes that were around at that time from that east side, just like I named the guys from the west side. There was nobody named Ayatollah. Ayatollah came about during the 80s when they kidnapped, the, that was during, was the Jimmy, was the Jimmy Carter administration. That could have been, my, what was that, 78, 77 somewhere, 76, 77 somewhere, Jimmy Carter administration. When they kidnapped the uh, American people off the airplane, and Jesse Jackson had to go over there and negotiate for the release of those, that's when that when you probably first heard that name. It's the Ayatollah Khomeini. I'm the Wolf. I'm the white boy from Cedar Block. Wolf and Sam Fountain. That one of my. That's one of my partners. Like I tell you, in Fruit Town, there was the Orange Street Boys. Before they were 
Chicago Street, John Paru. Paru, you did at that point. Paru Street do run all the way from from the west side all the way. It ends at Willowbrook. I don't know if it goes across Avalon. I believe it goes across Avalon, actually. Over to the one three fives. They were around for a long time. Yeah. Now you got involved in gang. Sure. But I but I but I think it's really uh, I got involved with cats who uh lived in the same neighborhood and who uh ran the same streets I did and believed what I did. And I you know, as a young boy you're looking for acceptance for anywhere you can get it and I, although I'm not proud of what happened, or I'm not proud of my experiences. I am. I am. Uh, I, I learned a lot from them that I think is invaluable for me in, in terms of the way I see the world. So, so from what I read, you were affiliated with the Bloods at one point. Yeah, 135th and Avalon Fives. Uh, that that uh, uh, 135th and Avalon neighborhood called the 135. It was where I grew up. The name of my production is Five Times. The company is Five Times uh, Productions. Not. Um, for an, any affiliation with the neighborhood, but for affiliation with the cats, who I thought were uh, the clearest, most honest, bravest human beings I've ever met, and not in a glorified way. I think that they just um, were men to me. And uh, I, although I didn't, uh, I would come to later on understand that the things they were doing were illegal, they never struck me as particularly immoral. Like, I know a lot of things are immoral. Uh, 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 but legal, and I know the things that are, are legal but not immoral. So I, I think they were, uh, you know, <laughs> some of the best human beings I've ever met. No, absolutely. Now, at one point, your cousin got killed. Sure. And uh, that that was uh, difficult because he grew up. Uh, he was a Hoover, a Five Nine Hoover, and I was. Uh, from the fives, and he was my one of my favorite cousins. And when he died, they wouldn't let me go to the funeral, which I didn't understand. But blood had killed my cousin, so <laughs> I knew that uh, later on I would come to realize that me being there would, would have been a great thing to me, it was just my family. But it was the, at that point I realized that I didn't, I knew I didn't have it in me to take human life, and it, I just, I, it just seemed um, brutal to me, and it seemed that it, I knew that that wasn't. In my thing, I remember being a kid and feeling so bad for the cats around me and not even knowing why. Uh, I used to feel so sorry for them. They had the money and the prize and the cars and they were cool and they could do, but, but I always felt bad for them. And later on, I would realize it was because I knew I would see things in the world that they never would. So that was, uh, I guess, my first real uh, concentrated look at empathy. Bullshit. Bullshit. It was L.A. was a whole different kind of animal. So it was an interesting time to kind of grow up and try to be a comedian and try to be a husband. And, and so it was a, it was a, it was a, uh, uh, a time that I look back on and wonder how it all came together. Right, because at one point you got kicked out of school. I got kicked out of school a couple of times. I got kicked out of Gardena, then I went to Gardena High, then I went to Lock High, I got kicked out of there, then I got to San Pedro High, I got kicked out of there. And I ended up going to Gardena High Adult School, and I got kicked out of there. So I ended up getting my GED from Londale uh, High Adult School. So I'm a proud member of the alumni of the graduating class of 1988 uh, uh, Londale GED class. And I was the valedictorian, by the way. Uh, so what were you doing at these schools to get you kicked out over and over again? Like fighting. I was fighting. Uh, I got kicked out of Gardena for a fight. Uh, I got kicked out of Locke because I was a blood and I wore that Vita Alsatsun shirt uh, to school, the third day of school. And I'm standing by the bus stop and all these niggas start hitting the fence. And I was like, somebody must get their ass whooped. And I realized it was me. No. I don't believe it. So I ran. And I run down the street. I duck into this, uh, this, this I think it was a uh, uh, liquor store right on the pier on Avalon. I duck, duck into the street. It was Koreans that owned the liquor store. And they're like, you're going to have to get out or we're going to leave. And I'm like, bitch, you can call the police. I'm not going nowhere, right? So all these people are outside. And my father happened to walk in, uh, get ready to buy some beer and, and a little bit of whiskey. And I said, Daddy, what are you doing here? He said, Nigga, come on. And we walked back out and went. I was like, I was like, how am I going to get out here? And all of a sudden, my old man, <laughs> he showed up. And so we walked out, and, and I didn't go back to lock anymore. I don't went to San Pedro. Got kicked out for a fight. Got kicked out for a fight in, 
at Gardena High Adult School. So many years later, when I tried to actually be a police officer, I got my GED from London. Okay, you wanted to be a cop at one point. I did. I did. I, and I was actually in the police academy for like a week. <laughs> then I got shit split. Yeah. So, because I wanted to get married and I, I knew I didn't. So all you had to do was get a cop. You could get a high school diploma or a uh, uh, or a equivalent, which was a GED. And so I took the GED so I could get married. And I ended up telling my old lady, I said, I'll, if I get accepted to the police academy, I'll marry you. And so I got accepted to the police academy and then got kicked out, or well, like left, and started working at the LA Times and uh, Greyhound. And my wife still, I still had to get married because I promised her. So I never asked her to marry me. Just the police letters that said this, just the uh, acceptance of the police academy it caused me to get married. Can't take that from Neil. Jude is supposed to be a gang, a gang member. His name is Ayatollah. I mean, that's that's what it says. 